I mean, every day is different. No, no two days are the same. There's nine to five job you're doing the same thing day in, day, day out. Um, you never know what the next day is going to be like. I've had some really um, challenging parents, like I said. Because I, I, I know the parents are going to be angry because they want their child back. They're going to take it out on me. They're going to take it out on someone. It's going to be me. It happens. When I do get nice comments, it's nice. <laughs> but but um, I, I've been doing it, like I said, 14 and a half years. And there's only like probably three parents, you know, a bit offhand. Three out of um, 12 ain't that bad. I love it. I love to see them, you know, when they're tiny and take, you know, you, you nurture and see them little, little milestones every day when they do something different. It's so nice. This is a little one I've got now. Oh, he's, he's so gorgeous. And the things he's doing, and he's doing it so quickly. I can guarantee before he's won, he'd be walking. Oh, he's always happy, always smiling. And when he wakes up like three, four o'clock in the morning, you look in the cot and see that smile. It's just like, all right, it melts. He's, he's gorgeous, and it's worth it. It is worth it. Because you can always sleep when he sleeps. It's, it's not hard. It's always ways of working around things, I, I find. He's, he, he was in a routine quite early. Mm. Then my husband had holidays. <laughs> like, so for the two weeks my husband was off, he sort of messed up his routine. But we got him back into it. And then the clocks went back. Messed it all up again. So he was waking at half five. Because to him it was half six. He's now sleeping through the night. But he does wake up a couple of times. And that's only because yeah. not he wants to cuddle. Once he gets a cuddle, he goes back off. So I don't think you can hear the music now. I've got nursery rhyme songs playing put that on and he goes off to sleep i had two sisters they were born a year apart so when one left the other one came and they both had fetal alcohol disorder i've never come across it i thought this poor baby was always cold because she was always shaking and so i'm like giving her cuddles and i'm thinking what's wrong with this baby and she used to just scream let, let out this scream and i thought there's something wrong with her yeah the mum took uh, I think some substance while she was pregnant with her and she's withdrawing and when she had an episode she used to like stiffen up and do this but we can always tell now when they were going to happen so we were just like gently bring her arms in just give her a cuddle let her know that we're here and then she would just relax um eventually the shaking and the screaming did stop then so when she left I had the sister so the, um, the sister was worse but, um she cried solidly for eight months she wouldn't stop crying. Um, I saw the day when it actually wore off because she stopped, she was crying, but then she stopped and I see her just looking around. So, like she's never seen the room before. And, you, and she smiled and the crying stopped from then. And then she started to progress really well. And she left that. Luckily, um, she went with her sister, so they're both together. That's when I got the one that was um, nine, six hours old <laughs> and left at 22 months. She was a good baby, so that was nice. She was good. I had a little bit of problem with her mum at the beginning. She never used to write in the contact, but, uh, contact book at all. She used to complain to the contact worker about how I dressed her daughter, how I did her hair. She complained about everything. I, I still wrote in a contact book, and I stopped looking at it because she never used to write anything in it. So one day I thought, oh, let me just really see. She, she did write something in it, and she wrote, thank you so much for looking after my daughter. And it was so nice, because I thought she complained every day. <laughs> every day she found something to complain about. But then she said, thank you. From then on, nothing. Um, we take taken to see the lights to our local shopping centre where they have Father Christmas and the Christmas Grotto. They usually get scared. <laughs> you know, still get the presents and they climb all over the boxes. I mean, they're more interested in the box and the paper than the presents anyway. You know, seeing the tree and trying to pull it down. <laughs> um, the year before, and I took the baby out in the snow. He loved it. He really did. He's never seen snow before. He's just looking at it. We made a little snowman and brought it inside and put it in the kitchen sink so he could see it. <laughs> yeah. I'm a big kid at heart <laughs> and I don't think I'll ever grow up as so same as my kids. <laughs> We're all the same. The only one's got like a good head on their shoulders is my husband. <laughs> when my grandchildren was quite young, um, 
they were so young, they didn't understand, so they, they thought she was mine. And when she left, I remember um, my granddaughter, my daughter had a baby, and my granddaughter said to her mum, Mum, are you going to give away your baby like our grandma? Grandma gives away all hers. <laughs> so we, my daughter had to try to explain to her what, what I was doing. I'm a foster care and these kids, are, you know, they, they move on and they either go to family or they get adopted. Or But um, she got, when she was seven, she sort of got the gist of it and understood. <laughs> and I didn't realise all that time. She thought I was just having these babies and giving them away. <laughs> I would advise anyone if they really wanted, they got the time and the patience and the room if you want to make a change or, or um, make someone's life better, do fostering. I mean, every day is different. No, no two days are the same as nine to five job you're doing. The same thing day in, day, day out. Um, you never know what the next day is going to be like. I don't think you should, um, to me, be working. So the baby needs your individual attention. Um, hopefully that the child above the baby is, so, is a lot older so they won't get jealous. But um, just they just need a warm, loving household, loving family, support, and, you know, just be there for the child to nurture the child. Yeah, and be committed with it because it, it comes with its challenges it's not plain sailing so just be prepared and you know find out a lot about it before applying to become a foster care or speak to someone else i've had loads of people come up to me and ask me even and i said to them it's not just you know looking after this baby and it's happy family it just comes with its challenges not that i'm trying to put them off you <laughs> she did though <laughs> sorry to say but um yeah just be prepared and speak to someone or go to openly for them and just see if it's the right thing for you and the right age group. I, I know that I couldn't do teenagers. I'm not at all. Uh, babies is the right age group for us. I, I just love babies. I just love everything about them. I love the smell. I love their little fingers. I just, just to see them grow. I see them do something different and every day and just and to know that they depend on you so much and then they give you that smile it just oh it just melts you i just love them it's just to know that you've helped a child and you, you've built the foundation and then when, wherever they go now they're just building on it and to watch them hopefully mature into well-rounded men and women a little boy i had um he came to me but his two brothers went to another foster carer um i think they were like 10 and 12 and 10. the eldest boy is now 18 in university and he's he still he calls me aunt De debbie auntie uh sri lankan he's um they still they're, we're still in contact he still messages me he still rings me he still thanks me for for all i did for his little brother and they're a lovely family so you know that's, that's that's nice to me that's you know they still appreciate you after all these years I mean, but when you get you know people thanking you still to this day or still giving you gifts and still they're really appreciative and it, it's nice it is nice yeah usually it's between 10 to 14 probably 10 to 14 days where the parents come to the house learn his routine. One day they'll come and they're bathing, probably the next day they'll come and give him his breakfast and lunch. Then they'll, the third day they'll probably take him out for a couple of hours to the park and then come back and they'll give him his evening meal and bath him. The next day they'll probably do the same thing but bath him and then get him ready for bed. And usually like the weekend, the baby will spend like a whole day with them and when so they do the feed and everything uh, final week the baby spends most of the time backwards and forwards they get to see their new home um, then they stay a weekend and then they come back to us like the Sunday spend the whole day with us the Sunday and then they go with them usually the Monday with the new parents sometimes we get to go with them to hand them over sometimes um, we're asked to sometimes we're not asked to but I like to go with them. 
um, a couple of babies, I actually went there with the foster baby as a Sunday. We had Sunday dinner all together and it was nice. The only thing is that when um, she said mum, we both answered. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. But um, um, we was given a photograph of the adopted parents. So I had one stuck on the fridge, one near the bed, one in here. So she, and we should keep showing her the photos of her new mum and dad. Um, when we went there for dinner, they had that same big photo hanged up and she went, dad. So I was glad then because she seemed happy in their company. We went upstairs, she saw her bedroom. She loved it. She got on well with her older brother. And it was nice because I left there knowing that she, she's going to be fine and I've, I've got